Greetings friends, Gemini here with Backyard Astronomy. It is the middle of the night. It is about 1.45 a.m. And the clock says Wednesday, Miracles, Mercury's Day. But in astrology, days begin at sunrise. And so we are in the middle of the night of a Tuesday, Mars's day. See the moon with the lion here. Lions and crabs and twins. And let's check in with Mars. Mars is preparing to set here in the northwest. So I don't know if the mountain will show at this hour. No, I'll say that this is a place that I call Solstice Hill because it's where zero Capricorn sets. That's the furthest su southern setting point of the zodiac. And then we head north until the furthest northern set, which is zero Cancer, which from here sets right between these eucalyptus goalposts over here, okay? So Mars is currently in Gemini and is actually out of bounds north, so he will actually set even further north than the sun ever can over here. But an important thing to know is that there are northern signs like Gemini, which rise north of east and set north of west. In the northern hemisphere, they travel really high in the sky. And then there are southern signs like uh, oh, Aquarius. The sun is setting right here right now. Or Pisces, Venus is setting right here right now. Or Aries, Jupiter is setting right here right now. Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Cancer, Leo, Virgo. I think I just called Aries a southern sign. That's not true. Aries is the first northern sign that rises north of east and sets north of west. So as you engage with the sky, you'll notice some strange things. Like as you get to learn the ecliptic stars, you'll notice that some of them like go really high in the sky and some um, <clears throat> rise to or reach at kind of lower altitudes. The reach is always due south where I live, always on the meridian, either due south or due north, wherever you are, and it's right here right now. So because where I'm standing right now, this tree is due south, so this is my meridian, so this is my midheaven, wherever the ecliptic, which runs here through Regulus, and close to here through the moon, and then here through Porima, and here through Spica. Okay, so this is the ecliptic, and wherever the ecliptic intersects the meridian above ground is the midheaven. So I can just see right now that the moon is in the tenth and still on its way up because the meridian divides the eastern sky, which ups, from the western sky, which downs. Regulus has already culminated. And Regulus currently, at, uh, in our day and age, at zero tropical Virgo, culminates at a higher height than later degrees of Virgo, like um, the moon, which right now, if I draw a line between these two stars of the lion, which are Chirithan and Zasma, it points to like 15 tropical Virgo. Okay, so I can see that the moon is further away. I've got to get the camera out of my face and kind of engage with the sky right now and measure the sky. And I'll tell you that this moon is oh, 18 tropical Virgo. Also, this camera is just kind of blowing out the moon and I can't zoom. So I don't know if this does anything for you, but I will tell you right now that the moon is past full. She is waning and clearly um, quincunx. I just learned the shape of the different phases or aspects of moon with sun. So if the moon is currently at 18 Virgo and quincunx, then she's telling me, first of all, that she's the sun is down here because I can see that her, her smile is facing that way. But also that the sun is at 18 Aquarius. Uh, is that true? <laughs> I think the sun might be at 19 today, but you can see how the moon just showed me, even with the sun not even in the sky, 
where to find the light and the stars with which the sun currently travels. Other ways that I can tell is looking at where the sun is setting on the horizon because the sun every year will walk back and forth and turn around at the solstice extremes like the crab that walks sideways at the tides which walk sideways. This is Sirius, the brightest star of our sky. So maybe I'll end by sharing a tale I've heard that this is the place where our souls come from, which the Lakota knew as the sacred hoop. In our day and age, Orion points to zero degrees tropical cancer, which is here in Tejad at the foot of Pollux, or sorry, Castor, the mortal twin, and then this is Pollux. But the Lakota know this place is um, Bear's Den in the heavens and on earth. It's this place that sadly uh, some now call Devil's Tower in the Badlands, uh, you know, who made those names up anyway. So the Bear's Den, or let's, let's speak about um, these stars as we know them in, in the Western Castor and Pollux, the heads of the twins. Procyon, the small dog, Sirius, the large dog, right, the hunting dogs of Orion who hunts what? The bull. So one of the stars of the sacred hoop, which is coming here, is down beneath the ground, which is Regal, the leading foot of Orion. And then another star, well, the Dakota, Dakota and Dakota people work with the Pleiades, which I can't see right now, but Aldebaran is close, the royal star Aldebaran, and this is the star that um, the Western astronomy uses in this asterism they call the winter hexagon, which are these same stars. So Aldebaran, the eye of the bull, and then we come up to the very bright Capella, Capella, Castor, Pollux, Procyon, Sirius, Rachel. Pleiades, or Aldebaran, and back to Capella. Said that this is where our souls come from, and that when we die, we will go back through this sweat lodge in the sky to be purified before we walk the starry road, I'll call it, <laughs> which is the Milky Way, or the spirit road, to the next place. See you in space.